Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome each of you in attendance as well as those of you who may be watching at home on City 7 to the January 28th meeting of the Independence Planning Commission. Uh, to start off our meeting tonight, let's uh, stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. For those of you tonight who are not familiar with our meetings, it is the, this commission's responsibility to hold public hearings and make recommendations to the Independent City Council on matters relating to zoning and land use changes within our city. We also consider and make decisions on plats, special use permits, and other issues, as well as changes in codes and policies that relate to city planning. Our procedure for each case tonight is as follows. First, as we take each case, the applicant of that case will be recognized to speak on behalf of their case. Then anyone else who would like to speak in favor of that case will be allowed to speak. Second, those who are in opposition or who have questions regarding that case will then be recognized to speak. After that, there will be a rebuttal period so that the person can explain his position or answer questions. Once the applicant is finished, the chair will declare the public hearing portion of the case closed and further comment from the public will not be recognized. At that point, the commissioners will have the opportunity to discuss the merits of the case with one another and during this discussion, the commission reserves the right to ask questions of all parties concerned. And then finally, the commission will render a decision on the case. Tonight, because this is the only public hearing on the cases that are on this agenda tonight, all those who wish to speak will be heard. All comments and questions should be addressed to the chair and not directly to the applicant or to the city staff. The chair also requests that statements be kept brief and on point, and that if a statement has already been made by a previous speaker, please do not repeat it or ramble, but focus and simply indicate what you want to say or your agreement on the matter. So now, to expedite tonight's meeting, the chair asks that everyone who's here tonight that wishes to testify or thinks that they may testify, that doesn't mean you have to, but if you think you might do it or you know you're going to do it, it's a time now to stand and be sworn in. So if anybody's going to speak, one person. Is there, are there, Stuart, do you see the other applicants? I see the applicants there. So you need to be sworn in. Yeah, anybody who's going to go up to this microphone and speak, or even if you ask questions, or want to make just a brief comment, you need to be sworn in. And just because you're standing and need to be sworn in doesn't mean you have to, okay? All right. Those standing, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. Thank you very much. You may be seated. The first item on our agenda tonight is it uh, case case number one nine dash three two zero zero six final plat. Is that a consent or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion on this or a motion to consider this? To vote on this? Disapprove it. Mr. Chair? Yes. In the matter of case number 19-320-06, final plat approval, I move for final approval of that. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second. We're ready for the vote. 
Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Drieger? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19-320-06, final plat, has been approved. Our next case is case 20-100-02, rezoning of 11610 East Truman Road. Will the city uh, give us the report? This is a request by the uh, Ararat Shrine Association to rezone this property on the northwest corner of North Forest Avenue and Truman Road from R12, which is two-family dwelling, and I1, which is industrial, to C1, neighborhood commercial. From the vicinity map, you can see the oval. It sits on the northwest corner of that intersection. This is the zoning for the site, for the area, with the property in the oval. As you can see, the area is a mixture of zoning districts. The southern part of the site is being, is, uh, is currently uh, I-1, which is that slightly bluish purple color, with the northern part being R-12. The large multifamily zoning to the east is the Grove Senior Living Complex, and to the south is the former medical complex with the office buildings and parking garage. This is a comprehensive plan for the site. It shows uh, civil and public uses for the site along with the utility services lot to the north and the former medical complex to the south being the same. The surrounding property designation is for neighborhood residential. The aerial photograph shows the site, shows the property with the site being in the oval. The former utility services building is on the south end of the site with a customer parking on the north end of the lot. To the east is a vacant lot and the Groves residential living facility. On the south side of Truman Road is the former Truman Medical Complex, much of which is owned by the Independent School District. The applicant has, been, has provided a couple of illustrations that shows how they would uh, make modifications to the outside of the building. You recognize this is the blue tile building that's been on the intersection for decades. It appears they're going to maintain the blue tile that's unique to this building and just add some modifications to the site as do away with the drive through lane, obviously. This is another one taking, uh, taken of the north elevation. Again, it shows the, uh, the drive through lane taken up, covered, but most of the building remains the same on the outside. This is the pictures of the site. This is, uh, we're standing on the uh, corner, taking uh, a shot of the northeast, excuse me, the southeast corner of the building with, you can see the Truman Road elevation on the left and the uh, <coughs> south, no, excuse me, north forest uh, elevation on the right. There's the drive-through uh, window and the sign is actually right here in front of us where the letters were for the ser uh, service center. This is the uh, east elevation. We're standing on the uh, west, excuse me, the east side of uh, North Forest looking directly at the building. Here we're on Truman Road uh, looking to the north, northeast at the uh, east side, of, excuse me, the west side of the building along with the customer parking area which is on the left side of the building. And uh, this is uh, looking to the west uh, this is some of the uh, small area of the parking on the north side of the building. And then this is the larger customer parking area north of the building. Uh, off in the distance there, it's not very visible, but is the uh, uh, services yard for uh, the water department and uh, some IPL stuff I think is in that yard also. The city continues to own that lot. This is on the uh, northeast corner of that intersection. It's a vacant lot. There was a building there about 10 years ago that was demolished. Off in the distance is the groves. This is the uh, southeast corner of the property. That's the uh, a medical office building that was next to the uh, hospital. And this is the parking garage that served the medical complex. It's on the southwest corner of that intersection. 
and this is a property that it's to the uh, west of the of the proper of the site uh, it's 100 yards or so from the uh, from the uh, Shriners building his staff recommends approval of this application okay is the applicant here yes okay uh, are there any questions of city staff before we bring the applicant up okay would you please come forward sir and state your name and address for the record if you would and just add anything you'd wish to to tell us uh larry adolphson 1307 southwest georgetown lee summit i'd like to thank the chairman and the commissioners for allowing me to talk um you didn't speak into the microphone a little bit more sir just let me know if I back off too much. The building has been vacant since November 2016. By allowing this rezoning, it will allow us to use the building and get occupants into the building. We want the building, um, there's been some interest in leasing it along with our Masonic lodges, our fraternity brothers, if you will, to um, hold meetings there and take use of the building. In the spring, we plan on doing some landscaping and some cosmetic improvements. And by allowing the rezoning, this building will no longer be vacant and it'll help vandalize the neighborhood. Questions? Are there any uh, questions? Right. Yes, sir. Oh, sure. Do, yeah. do you, um, plan on uh, <coughs> closing the other shrine building eventually and moving here? Uh, not at this time. It is not closed. Not in the near it future. Is, it has not been sold. But in the near future, do you plan on this being the main building? I can't answer that. I don't, in, in, there's no one looking at it right now. So near future is, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Best of my ability anyway, I hope. But your, but that would be the dream? Would be to sell the older building and have this be the permanent one? That, that's part of it. Okay. We got a lot of things we're juggling over there and uh, had some stuff fall through and you just roll with the punches and go on. I imagine sure. everyone here knows what that's like. Yeah, unfortunately, yes, I do. I note in the background data that although this is a substantial facility and certainly would accommodate uh, facilities to rent out banquets that you have no plans to install kitchen facilities, at least not at this time. No, we don't. We have, uh, I imagine there will be um, at the meetings, they have uh, food afterwards but not like a banquet full scale something like that no all right are there any more questions okay thank you sir thank you all right is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case is there anyone else who is here that has questions or who is opposed? Okay. I'll declare the public portion closed on this case and would ask uh, if the commissioners have any comments or um, motions. S straightforward, Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. This is a rather straightforward matter. I move that in the matter of case number 20-100-02 to rezone 2.94 plus or minus acres from R12 to family residential and I1 industrial to C1 neighborhood commercial be approved. I second. She seconds. Um, unless there's any discussion, I believe we're ready for the vote. 
Commissioner Dreher? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Commissioner Ashbaugh? Yes. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Case number 19-320-0, I'm sorry, wrong one. Cash, case number, oh, that's right, it, that's why I don't have it. <laughs> case number 20-100-02, the rezoning of, uh, of 11610 East Truman Road has been approved. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. All right, now, our next case is Case number 19-400-04, short-term rental. Um, would the city give this report, please? Yes, so Brian Crutchfield for Better Places, LLC, seeks to operate a short-term rental business at this property at 9630 East Linwood Boulevard. The oval shows the location on the uh, northwest corner of uh, Linwood and South Overton Avenue, the city limits are to the west and south. This is the zoning for the property in Oval. The site along with other, all other properties in the immediate area are zoned R6, single family residential. The aerial shows the site with the property in the Oval. The applicant is unique and this application is unique in that it will have two separate rental units on the site the main house, and a guest house. In the oval, the house, the main house is on the south, which is on the bottom part of the property, and the uh, guest house is on the north of, of the site. Single family homes surround the property. This is the applicant provided this aerial photograph showing the house, the parking area, and the additional parking on the side of the house, along with the guest house, which is in the yellow, little green box, I believe. Here we're on Lidwood looking north into the site at the front of the house. Here we're on Linwood, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we're on Overton looking at the uh, west at the side of the house which also faces south here. You, you can see on the, the uh, Overton is on the, on the right and then the Linwood is on the left. Here on Overton, looking west at the driveway and the guest house, which, which is the second dwelling. For more from the information available, this stunt conforming situation with the two dwelling units on the lot has been in place for many years. Here we're looking to the northwest at the house directly north of the site. This is the house on the east side of Overton, which northeast of the site. This is a house on the northeast corner of, the, of this intersection, directly east of the applicant's property. This building, this house is on the northeast corner of the intersection, cat a corner to the applicant's property. Here we're looking south, directly at the house on the southwest corner of the intersection. Again, directly across from the applicant's property. This is another house on the south side of Linwood, southwest of the applicant's property and then this house is directly west of the site. A staff recommends approval of this application subject to the following conditions. The short-term rental shall obtain a business license in accordance with city code and, and comply with Article 3, Chapter 5 of the city code. The occupational license number shall be listed on all advertisements and, and online platforms. The business must comply with all standards established by section 14, 420 of the city code. And then the applicant must provide a total of four paved parking spaces for guest parking. I would like to add that, that we should put a, a deadline on that for it to be done no later than like the 1st of May. Give the applicant a couple time, a couple months to of good weather to add those spaces. Okay, so and we're not asking for, we're not ask, asking for four additional. We're just asking that two because he's got six, right? So just want to pave two of those. Yeah, just two, two additional spaces. Gotcha. Okay. Right now they've got two spaces on the street along the 
um, the two East Linwood and uh, and um, Overton, <laughs> but they're in they're basically parking on the grass. Gotcha. So we want to make those spaces legitimate, so to speak. Sure. All right. Does anyone have questions of city staff before we bring the applicant forward? Okay, would the applicant please come forward? State your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, Brian Critchfield, 15408 East 44th Terrace, Independence, Missouri, 64055. I know you've been here before, but it's been a little while, so if you can just give us a little more information uh, if you feel like you need to. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. It's sure. good to be back. Um, just to you know, reiterate what I said last time I was here. Um, Make uh, sure you, you, you got to. Sorry. You've almost got to. Be <laughs> um, really close. Yeah, uh, you know, like I said in my explanation for it, uh, basically, um, you know, we lived in the house. We were, there's a lot of room in there, actually. There's a lot more room than it looks like from the pictures. Um, and there's a couple different finished spaces in there. Um, so we had my mom living there at one point. She was living with us, and uh, we were using it in that regard. Um, and then we used the guest house, which is fully finished. We were renting it out long term. Had a couple bad experiences with um, some longer term rentals. Uh, we tried a few different things, um, and then we had a friend tell us about a short term rental thing that he was doing, working out really well for him. Um, so we tried that just because we were losing a bunch of money the way we were doing it. Um, so since then, um, we have been operating short term rental mainly through Airbnb. Um, and it's, it's basically given us the opportunity. The biggest thing is it's allowed us to renovate the house. Pretty much uh, all the money that has been made um, through using short term rental, we put back into the house. Um, the inside, it's pretty old. I think the house is built in 1947. Um, so it's got a lot of old stuff in there. So we've renovated a lot of that, um, torn a lot of the old stuff out and um, some electrical work and stuff. Um, and then the outside as well. Um, so we've done a lot of landscaping and exterior work. Um, we actually paved that driveway recently. Um, so, and I guess not to drum on too long, but it's actually given us the opportunity to for me to, we took the money and put it into the house, and then we've also taken some of that money and started my own LLC, um, and kind of was able to push me in some other directions. So actually now my business, we do uh, home rehabs. So we do a lot of uh, flipping houses uh, in the area. It's not really flipping houses, it's more like fixing up old junky houses for rental in the area, uh, mainly Independence and uh, Eastern Kansas City. Um, so it's growing, we're a very small business, but just as of January, I was able to become self-employed. So um, this was kind of the jumping point for that, so it's been a tremendous opportunity. Um, it's given my mother employment. Um, she's disabled, uh, she can't do a whole lot, but she's able to clean the places between tenants, so um, that actually keeps her employed. Um, and then also just other people that come and do the maintenance and everything. Uh, we keep it very well maintained. We're at the mercy of a five-star rating, so um, we keep the house uh, pristine condition and clean and everything operating, and so that's about it. Okay. Does anyone have uh, questions of Brian? Okay. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Um, do you um, rent just exclusively on the online? Yeah, yeah. We use platforms, and the mainly <clears throat> we use uh, mainly Airbnb, uh, VRBO, and the reason we do that um, is because they have insurance, they have all the the structure, um, background check, all that stuff. So basically, when the person gets to us, we already have them screened. We already have full coverage insurance in case something were to happen. So yeah, and we your, keep. And it. your minimum rental is one day. Uh, I think hours, we have it set at two days right now. Two days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, we've got one more question. Sure. Have you looked into um, what would happen if somebody chose not to leave? What uh, would, yeah. What if it would be criminal or civil? Um, no, it's a criminal thing. It's it, Well, basically, it goes to the police. They, they are an uh, unlawful tenant. So, I mean, you'd have to go through that. Um, 
but they basically it's called trespassing if they stay any longer than they're supposed to which we would reach out to uh, the platform that they booked through and they have a whole procedure that they go through but we've never run into that thus far well you know what so. with the long-term rental it's civil you right you know you can't get them out mm -hmm. you, so you think this I is had to go through that too <laughs> correct right so you think this is different as far as I know it is as far as I know I like I said I haven't had to deal with it yet yeah but um, I've had like guests sleep in, like you know they've slept in a little too late, so I had to call the platform and say, hey, they're you know they're they're here a little late, and they basically say, well, if in the case that they did stay too long, you would just call the police and they're trespassing. That's basically how it goes. So you because there's no there's no uh, uh, lease per se. It's just a single night use. So you're already in business. You're already doing this. Yes, sir. I see. I think you answered my question. Great. So, well, thank you very much. We may ask you to come back up, but uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Sure. Okay, is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case? All right, is there anyone here who is opposed or who has questions? Okay, I'm gonna cl uh, close the public hearing public portion of this hearing and ask the commissioners for any comments, questions, or motions. I was just a little confused on the parking. So like he already says he's got the six spaces, but we're requiring him to have four and then you said something about you just wanted it to be more intentional. Is that correct? Yeah. If you look at the aerial photograph here, uh, the two spaces that he has along Overton and also the two that he has on Linwood, shown in the little sort of white boxes there, those are just parking on the grass, essentially. Okay. We want genuine paved spaces for those, for those uh, additional, not just parking in a low spot on the grass along the curb. Is there a time frame that he has to have those done? Well, I suggested that uh, we would give him till May 1st. Okay. Yeah, the, the pictures that we took in the uh, uh, when he came through the first time show that much better. Uh, the wind pictures in the snow here, they don't really show what that looks like. You can't see that parking in the grass. You, know, you can see it's, it's pulled off and the grass is partly dead there. And so we're trying to get away from that. And if he's running a commercial business here, he should improve the property. And I think you could take that off your taxes for that matter. Uh, business expense. I'm sure I'll have to ask you this again as we go along to the future, but how many, uh, is there a requirement for how many parking spaces that he needed? And does it, does it vary with the size of the house or just for the uh, units? Well, I, I think that, uh, there's only really two units here, and I think a hotel is, uh, what does it say here that they require that? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it just says uh, she'll be in, in conformance with the parking standards, which I believe is one unit per, one space per unit. But here, when you have three bedrooms in one house, or in one bed, in one, you know, and then two bedrooms and another, I, I just two sp spaces, he's just not going to make it. It's just not going to work. I agree. So does that mean we don't really have that in the, is, is, is a certain like standard that we are trying to apply or we just take them as, as they come? Well, um, I think there's a little bit of both. I mean, we have uh, one that will be coming through in a few weeks that, basically has no off-street parking, no paved off-street parking. Uh, they've been, the gravel that was there was, was kind of dissolved, and so there, but nobody goes there most of the time. So we're just gonna, we're requiring to be provided, but it's a small house with only, very small house actually with two spaces. So it's reasonable to assume that they wouldn't have more than two uh, people there at once, and maybe just one car. So as a side note, couldn't it be, this is just random, but couldn't it be that it's a parking space per bedroom? Isn't that kind of how? Which is kind of what we're going to yeah. we're going with this uh, recommendation. Yeah. 
So the answer to my question was, we just take it as on a case by case basis. Uh, yeah, with the, with the general idea there being basically. And I'm fine with that. I just didn't know if we had a minimum requirement or just what we were doing. So. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a situation that's kind of unique that it has yeah. two separate dwelling units. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions or comments, Mr. Chair? Yes. I, I certainly applaud this applicant for coming forward, and I know there are a substantial number of other existing short-term operations that are not licensed, and I'm fully confident in the competence of staff and the fire department to review the application. However, as we note that we took a pause in reviewing applications and giving time for the council to put together regulations and working with staff, I, I think we would be remiss if we did not give due notice to this particular applicant and all subsequent applicants that our regulations or our ordinances are a work in progress and that the license is for one year. And as these regulations evolve, standards may change and you would be required to conform with the existing uh, regulations in place upon renewal. Point well Thank taken. You. Yeah, point well taken, Billy. Um, and one thing that I did want to ask you that I forgot to ask you is um, you're, you're in agreement with all the recommendations that the city's requiring you to do, right? The paving, the parking lot, and all that, and the license. Okay. Just have to ask. Okay. Are there any other comments or questions? Yeah, I have a comment. Sure, Joe. We could have almost 20 people in, in such a small area. I mean, they, he's, he's put on here that he could, he could have up to 10 people, I believe, in each yeah. building. That 10 for both. Okay. But 10 for both? Well, that's better. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes 10 people can be just as loud or louder than 20 people, depending on their mood. But I'm sure that uh, there's... I would think, uh, are there, are, do you know some of the neighbors in there? And maybe you should come up to the microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, just one thing that a lot of folks are concerned about sometimes is, you know, there's people coming in that they don't know mm -hmm. and they're there for a short time. So um, are there any neighbors that you know or people that wouldn't be shy about hey, calling you up and saying, hey, you know, these people are getting kind of rowdy or this is, this is going on mm -hmm. that would uh, communicate with you about that so that, I mean, I suppose they could call the police, but, uh, but uh, would they notify you? Yeah, I've actually had neighbors call me. Um, actually, it was, it's usually things that are unrelated, but just because they know that I operate a business, they've called me saying, hey, there's, there's a guy kind of creeping around the property over there looking at your fire pit. Looks like maybe they, they might want to take that thing or, um, so yeah, I have gotten calls. Uh, you know, like I said, knock on wood, we've never had any bad experiences to where we've, you know, had neighbors call and say, oh, there's something on fire, or, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. it may be. So, um, but yeah, we do have neighbors that we do talk to. They have our phone numbers um, that we have good relationships with. Okay, great, great. Thank you for sharing that. I did want to say one thing, the, the, sure, the spaces on the side of the road, they mm -hmm. are actually um, old spaces. They put uh, railroad ties and gravel. So, I mean, they could definitely be improved and I don't mind putting pavement on them. But I just want to say it's not just pulling there in the grass with ruts and everything. There is actually gravel and railroad ties there, so. Okay, all right, thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any comments? I was just going to say, I feel comfortable knowing that you're on the VRBO or the Airbnb because they are so strict, and you, you do have to be so compliant in order to be, I mean, you know, like you said, if you get three stars, you just might as well do something different. <laughs> but so it's a comfortable platform to be on, I think, both for the city, from a city standpoint, and just personal. So 
I applaud you for doing that because that's a big, it's a big task. There's a lot of criteria you have to meet. Mm. That's good. Okay. Anything further? Motion, perhaps? You take it. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move to approve case number 19-400-13 short-term rental. Arlington Street Better Places, LLC. Mm -hmm. With the recommendations from the city and a deadline of May 1. Well, you're on it Am I on the wrong one? Yes. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't get my packet. Sorry about that. Okay. Start over. Case number 19-400-04, short-term rental for Linwood Street, Better Places, LLC. Right? Cool. With the city's recommendations and the added deadline of May 1. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Cool. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Been moved and seconded. Unless there's any comments or additional questions, we're ready f to take the vote. <coughs> Commissioner Dree here? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19 400 04 short term rental for 9630 East Linwood Boulevard has been approved. Congratulations to you folks and good luck. Our next case, which someone's already told us what it is, so there's no surprise here, but it's um, already been case, <laughs> case number 19 400 13 short term rental for 3428 South Arlington Avenue. Could you provide the report for us, please? Yes, Mr. Critchfield is also the applicant for this location. Ah. So he seeks to operate oh, yeah. a short-term short -term rental business at 3428 South Arlington. The oval shows the location of the site on the west side of Arlington Avenue, just north 35th Street. This is the zoning for the area with the property in the oval. The site, along with other properties in the immediate area, is zoned R6, single-family residential. As you get closer to uh, 35th Street on the south side of 35th and also 40 Highway further south, it, it has more commercial areas. The aerial photograph shows the site in the oval. 35th Street is to the south, as you can see there. Um, <coughs> single-family homes surround uh, the property. Again, the applicant provided this uh, Aerial photograph showing the house, the garage, which is in the green rectangle, and the parking uh, in the driveway, and then another parking area in front of the street, in front of this along the street. Here we're on Arlington, looking west into the property of the front of the house, a yellow-colored wood frame house. This is another sh site uh, photo of the front of the house. Uh, that shows the parking with this applicant. Uh, there's actually six parking places We've got one in the garage that the, the tenants can use two in front of the garage and then also three along the side of the garage This is the property <coughs> to the north of this site uh, Directly north we're looking to the northwest uh, Here we're looking to the east and uh, Northeast on the houses on the east side of Arlington across from the property. This one and this one. This photograph, we're looking south down Arlington toward 35th Street, which is just off to the left. And this is the house directly south of the subject property. Staff recommends approval of this application subject to the following conditions. Short-term rental shall obtain a business license in accordance with the city code and comply with chapter five, article three of the city code. The occupational license number shall be listed in all advertisements and online platforms. The business must conform to all, all standards established by section 14, 420 of the city code. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, before we bring Brian back up again, is there any questions of city staff? 
Okay. Come up and just go ahead and give us your name and address for the record again, please. All right. Brian Critchfield, 15408 East 44th Terrace South, Independence, Missouri, 64055. Thanks. Is there anything uh, like different that you could tell us about this one? Uh, there is. It's basically an extension of kind of what we were already doing. It's two minutes drive from my other place. Um, the difference with this one is we, uh, so through doing the first one, what we really noticed um, is there are a high demand for what you might call longer short-term rental, which would be still under 30 days. But it, really what we target is uh, traveling nurses, which is actually a really big uh, portion of people, more than you would think. Um, traveling nurses, um, uh, people traveling for work, uh, business stuff. Um, so, and actually we've had a good percentage of the people are, uh, you wouldn't think there'd be a lot of this, but you know, people get their home worked on and they got to move somewhere. Well, you don't want to go move in a hotel for say half a month or three weeks. So we've actually had quite a few people for that and we noticed that demand. So that's kind of was our intention with this one. So this is, there's no two day minimum here. This is, I think we got to set to a week minimum. So um, the people you attract are ones that need to come into town for, it's mainly people coming into town for business. That's who, that's basically been 90%. Um, and the rest has been people getting their homes worked on or something. So, um, and that's pretty much all I got to say about that one. It's pretty much the same thing. It's through Airbnb, VRBO, and uh, yeah, just a little extension of what we were already doing. Just kind of a little bit different setup. Okay. Are there any questions about this property for Brian? Yeah, yeah sure. Yes, go ahead. Uh, is that a, how long have you been doing this? Renting this one out? Um, uh, gosh, four or five months. Okay. The same way with the other one? No, the other one's a little longer. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've been running my own business. The time frame's a little weird. It's been oh. super busy, so I think maybe six or seven months, something like that. So or pretty steady. One rental what's that I mean it's pretty steady rental oh yeah I mean yeah not vacant very long it's staying probably 90 to 95 percent booked yeah mm -hmm. okay. all right thank you thank you okay is there anyone in here who would like to speak in favor of this case no. all right is there anyone here who would like to speak against this case or who would have questions? All right, the public hearing portion is closed. I have a question for staff. In the, in the licensing process, is it permissible to have concurrent short-term, long-term licensing? You mean be not able necessarily to do this particular case, but in any case. You mean have a short-term rental license and also be a uh, a, a long-term long landlord? Mm -hmm. uh, not at the same location, but there's nothing that says that you can't be. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the, at the same location. Well, I think you'd have to be one or the other. It's one side of the coin or the other. Did, did we advise this particular applicant? In some cases traveling nurses can be on site for 60, 90 days. Well, uh, the, the ordinance says the maximum is 30 days. Mm -hmm. For the short-term rental? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's aware then that in a case of a traveling nurse as a tenant, that the 30 days is applicable well, I can't speak to what he's aware of, but that's what the ordinance says, and I'm sure he's sitting here so he's aware of it now if he didn't before. It's actually set to a maximum of 30 days. So it's minimum of a week, maximum of 30 days. Okay. So technically, this person, this made-up person, could stay there for 30 days, check into a hotel for a day, and come back and stay for another 30 days, correct? Theoretically, yes. I don't know. I've never had that happen, but I don't. I don't see anybody doing that. But I suppose they could. Sure. If I allowed it, they would still have to request to stay. It's always a request for 
for a book. Sure, and they have to go back through the platform again, correct? Correct. Sure. Okay. All right, thanks. Any other questions? More motions. Can I try it again since I did it already? Yeah. You had rehearsed? I did, I had rehearsal. Is this the right one, Jim? Yes. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, I move to approve case number 19-400-13, short-term rental, Arlington Street Better Places, LLC, with staff recommendations. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Unless there's any last-minute questions or comments, we are ready for the vote. Commissioner Drieger? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Weir? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashball? Yes. Case number 19-400-13, short-term rental at 3428 South Arlington Avenue has been approved. Congratulations, and uh, being, a short, uh, being a small business owner myself, well, just keep saying it to yourself. It hasn't happened yet because it's going to happen. <laughs> it's just going to happen, but it's, it should be a good experience for you, and I hope everything goes well for you. Okay. Our next item on our agenda is approval of minutes. Does anybody have any changes, modifications, spelling corrections? Okay. The approval the minutes will stand as approved as written. Um, any uh, questions of do we have for staff or does staff have anything to tell us or share with us? Nothing from staff tonight. Okay. When's our next uh, our next meeting? Okay. Yeah, February 11th. February 11th. Okay. So we're going to start going through these uh, delayed uh, short-term rentals. Yeah, I think we have two or three scheduled about every meeting for the okay. foreseeable future. So. Okay. All right. Uh, if there's nothing else, we will stand adjourned at 6.48 p.m.